What's up YouTube, I'm just another guy and welcome back from Parks to Premier League and I know it's been a long time since I've recorded any sort of video and even uploaded any sort of video as well, it's been a long time uh, but a little bit of time right now, I thought you know, might as well get some things recorded hopefully before the end of Football Manager 2014 I will get this series completed I don't think I'll be able to get the Pentagon Challenge completed, in fact I haven't really been playing Football Manager for the past four, four weeks or so, four or five weeks so yeah, but um, I've got a lot of like points saved on this game. These are all sort of pre-save points, so I'm able to you know sort of pick a pick a time in the day for me, you know, look around the save, and then re-jog my memory, and then jump back into it. So if there are a few mistakes, apologies. It's been a very long time since I actually saved this point, um, but yeah, hopefully I can finish off this obsolete save, and then you know that will either come maybe a bit before the end of or the start of 2415, the full manager 2015. Well, hopefully. I will record some of that as well. So I do have plans for that game. Not 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 specific plans, but I do have plans of uploading that game. So uh, let's jump into this. So here we are. We are in League One, of course, Ebbsfleet. We're now at the end of the season. So we're at the end of our fourth year now at Ebbsfleet. And did we manage to get promotion? That was the big question, I believe, where I left us off. You know, were we able to get out of this division? First time of asking. Four promotions in a row. Were we able to do that? And the answer to that question is we did. We managed to finish second place in the league. At the end of the day, end of the season, we just conceded a few too many goals for us to get that first place. As you can see, 67 conceded uh, in comparison to 47 of Peterborough. And actually, if we go all the way down, we have to get to Colchester of ninth to find a team that conceded equal amount of or more goals than us. And we actually have one of the highest goals conceded in the league. So. Oh, actually, roughly mid-table. So, a big problem defensively for us still, you know, that is the weakness defence. But, hopefully, uh, now we've got promoted, you know, Championship does offer a lot more money than the comparison to the lower few leagues. It's still not the level of the Premier League, of course, but it offers a lot more money. It is a, a, a large step up in reputation, as we see, 33 in the league here, up until 11. So, um, yeah, really, really... Optimistic how we can do next year, of course, a fantastic two pro a cheap promotion yet again. Uh, ten defeats as well with the lowest in the league, so we were a difficult, a difficult team to beat. Despite the fact we conceded a lot of goals, we did score enough on the, on a day to always compete with the team we were playing with. So, or most of the time anyway, of course, we did lose some games without scoring. But that is still a very good sign to see. So, yep, yeah, let's, let's jump into the... Um, Transfers, love the transfers, and have a look at who we signed in January to actually help us get to this stage. So we actually had quite a big influx of players in January. Uh, we'll go to the outs first, though. We did loan out Ahmet Od Ozmir, I believe it is Od Odmir, 18 years of age. He went out on loan to Stockport, and also where we sold Frank Fielding to Chelsea for 60k. Now that may seem quite a strange move because Frank Fielding was probably the best signing of the season from that summer signings. He was a great player for us, absolutely fantastic goalkeeper. You know, why would I sell him for 60k as well, which is quite a small fee in comparison to what we've got in the past for other players, you know, like Vigorox, who I personally don't feel is that great of a keeper. Um, but the reason I did sell him is because we actually signed another keeper. Moldovan, who I'll show you in a second, is a player, I believe, better ability than Frank Fielding. Uh, I think roughly putting around the same level of performance as Love Look in a second. Uh, for, again, memory. Uh, but... Frank Fielding, 60k to Chelsea. I was happy to pick up 60k for him. Six months worth of work for that. So roughly, I picked up 10k a month for him being here. A k wages, which means I'm getting about 9k profit off this guy for the time he was here. So overall, I was really chuffed for that. Surprised Chelsea came in for him. I was offering him to clubs, and Chelsea were one of the few teams that actually came in and made a bid for him and actually played for Chelsea. So that's even more surprising, considering you know his history. He's never played in the Premier League before. He's been in Premier League sides, but not or been in a Premier League side, but never played for them. So. Uh, Frank Fielding, off to a new, a new chapter in his career. But to the ins, to the more important side. So, the first guy we brought in was Matt Sayers, who is a 20-year-old striker. This guy, very good, re or a decent regen, three-star potential, uh, which is roughly, you know, League One standard. So, actually, nothing incredible, but we did need to add a little bit more depth up front, and Matt Sayers was someone who I saw was decent out there. You know, physically, he's... Pretty well rounded, plus that diversity in these positions of playing centre attacking mid and left attacking mid was something I really wanted to utilise and use. So, um, there we go. And as you can see, it's not bad performances, you know, putting decent displays. Never really scored a load of goals, didn't get a load of assists, in fact, didn't get any assists. But, you know, still 
good enough average rating performances in the league for me to be pleased with. So, and that was Matt Sears. Next guy, Moldova, and this is the guy that will actually replace Frank Fielding. So, we'll have a look at Frank Fielding again quickly. As you can see, 6.93 average match rating for his sixth month here. Moldova played the second half of the season. As you can see, has got better stats than Frank Fielding, in my opinion. It may be different to yours. Uh, but this guy, I feel, is great. I've, you know, 3.2k a week, that is a lot of wages. And the reason, you know, we signed so many players in January is because our wage bill was increased. Um, also, you know, the fact we had new owners come in as well, they, you know, plus how well we were doing in the league. They invested quite a lot in us. So, um, you know, a lot of players came available to us for that reason. And also because we were doing so well, our reputation was growing. Uh, so Moldova became available. And if we look, there goes 6.81. So not as good, uh, but still, to me, decent enough, conceding just over a goal a game. I was really happy with that. And if you look at his history, you know, nowhere really incredible he's played. You know, the highest he's ever played that actually is the Liga Adelante, the second division in Spain for Ponfer Ponferradina. Ponferradina. And they're up and they're an up and down team. So, you know, never played a massive amount of first team football. But this guy's report is very good. A leading championship goalkeeper. So we'll have a look at how he does next year. Now he's had six months to sort of adapt and settle in. And we'll really see how we can go next season. Uh, but yeah, Moldovan, great player. I'm looking for, I'm excited to see how we can do. And this guy, Chris Lyons, he came in just for a bit of backup. Um, never really played for us. He four substitute appearances down here. So um yeah, he was just there for backup, just to add a little bit more depth in the team, and he wasn't a good player. And for that reason, he rarely featured. Next guy, Angelo Belanta, 26 years of age. Again, we needed to add to squad depth. I really did panic because, of course, the takeover happened before the start of the season, and as a result, I had to rush to sign a lot of these players in um, uh, in the start of the season, and uh, actually after the season started. So as a result, the squad depth was very thin, and it was something that worried me in the first half of the season. If we If we got... You know, too many injuries, we would be in real trouble. So I was adding to squad depth here in the signing of Balanta. And Jack Memory, again, uh, same rules apply. We just needed to add someone into the team with a little bit of squad depth. Um, and these two guys we've signed going into next season. I think these two signings are great signings and players that will help us take us take this club to the next never, next level. So the first guy, Sandro Wieser, who is a Liechtenstein international, 44 caps there. Um, not the greatest reputed team or national team I know but still you know 44 caps for any international team should be at least recognized um, but yeah this guy has been playing in Europe and or some of the European divisions um, in the form of you know the Swiss the Swiss first division group two a bit in the Super League and again in Germany a bit in the first division second division and the regional division southwest uh, but again, no real amazing reputable team to play for, a bit like Moldovan. But if you look at his report, leading championship player. This is an incredible signing if he is actually a leading championship player. Because it would mean we've got someone that could take us to the Premier League already, a bit like Moldovan. And not only that, though, I'm not going just to report here. I think stats-wise, he is an incredibly well-rounded player. You know, good passing, tackling, marking. That's really good, which means he could be the defensive player or the attacking player. Creativity is good enough for me. Physically, here's what I've got. You know, again, other stats technically and mentally that I haven't pointed out, they're really well. They're really good, you know, or at least up to a level where I'd want them at. So, Sandro Wieser is, I feel, has the capabilities, I should say, to be a really good signing. And the last guy we got was Diallo, or Diallo. I have no, really, no idea really how to pronounce that. I'm going to say Diallo. Uh, but 26 years very centre attack in mid. This guy's come in. And again, good championship player. Uh, we do, of course, have Liam Kelly and Richard Levitt there, but Richard Levitt is someone that has always played out on the left for us, um, despite the fact he's, he is a natural, natural centre attacking mid. Uh, but he will be out on the left again. Liam Kelly is on loan. I sadly can't re-sign him, so Liam Kelly will, re -return, will, will be returning to Liverpool. So it means we did not have a spot open for that centre attacking mid, and so this is the guy I've managed to bring in. Not got incredible stats, I will admit that, you know, but the stats he needs as an advanced player maker attack... Um, they are all up to a decent enough level apart from teamwork and decisions. But apart from that, he's got some really good flair, which is really nice to see, and technique as well. So hopefully he can use that to create a few goals next season. Uh, we've also got a few other transfers we're sort of looking at. Uh, we failed our work permit for Romario. Um, this guy is an incredible player. I think back in Football Manager 2012, this guy was one of the best right-backs you could probably sign if you wanted a sort of incredible player in the future because he was so young, so good. Uh, I'd still say roughly the same in this game. I'd still recommend probably signing this guy up if you can. I know he's gone to Hoffenheim, I think, in the game. Um, so, at the start of the game. 
But this guy's got some really nice stats and really good going forward and defending as a right back. Really good wing back probably actually. Uh, I tried bringing this guy in but sadly the work permit failed so that was a massive shame, massive hindrance to the work permit. Uh, we also are looking at Daniel Schwab as well. That deal is close and we'll probably, I'll probably bring this guy in. We could really use someone like him. Not only is he a good centre back now, someone that we sort of need in a position I'm, I'm still looking to strengthen on of course. Defensively we were so weak last year I'm always looking for defenders. But yeah, not only will he come in and be a first choice player but he also can play left back and right back. So that will be very, very useful for the side as well because we'll probably have to shrink the number of players at the side again to afford to bring in players who are good enough to maybe help us push for a roughly you know, mid-table, maybe even top half-table finish next season because preferably I'd like to do that. And also we had a contract rejected from Razak Nu Nuhu. I think that's how you pronounce that. So that's a shame as well. But let's go into the fixtures now. Let's have a look at how we did in the season. So last time I left you off, I actually have no idea. Um, so I'm going to take a punt here and take a guess that it was around the Blackpool game. So I'm going to continue on after the Blackpool match. So after that, we drew 3-3 to Sheffield Wednesday. I went on a decent run of form as we beat Preston 4-3 sorry, in a very high-scoring affair. But the game that we came out with three points in, end of the day, that's what mattered. Uh, of course, ideally, I wouldn't want to concede three goals, but three points. That's great. Uh, after that, beat Oxford, U Oxford United 2-0 in the FA Cup third round, progressing us through there, which is a really nice achievement for the team and also bringing a little bit of money before we drew to Charlton 1-1 and beat York 5-1, thumping, thumping in the goals and for some reason, sorry about this guys, I've changed what screen I'm using. I want to insert a column. Uh, nope. Wait. Yeah, I just want to do this. Sorry. Nope, you don't want to do that. Uh, um, there should be... One moment, guys. Alright, guys, so... Sorry about that. Uh, I was showing out the view. Um, because I wanted to get the goal scorers up there. But, um... Yeah, Dwayne York, well, Levick scored two. Which is what I wanted to point out. Following that, though... Bad run of form. Probably our worst run of form all season long. Uh, we lost 5-0 to Everton in the FA Cup 4th round, which of course the loss was expected, but the deficit of defeat, really hard to take, no matter who it's against, you don't want to be losing 5-0. Uh, Drew to Yeovil, which was a bit of a hurdle, losing 3-0 to Carlisle, the first time we lost in the league since the Blackpool game, so that was a shame. Sorry, this is bugging me. There you go, like that. Um, and following three draws in a row, we drew 2-2 with Rotherham. Uh, we drew 1-1 to Oxford in the Johnston Payne Trophy South Final. And we drew to Colchester 1-1 in the league. In the league, So, after that, we finally got back to winning ways. And it was a game where it mattered. In the Johnston Payne Trophy Southern Final, second leg. Bit of a mouthful. We finally, uh, we got, finally got a win yet again. And Liam Kelly with the only goal of the game, which put us through to the Johnston Payne Trophy Final at Wembley uh, a bit later on in the season. So, that was a really good achievement for the team. Uh, after that, we beat Plymouth 1-0. I mean, we drew to Plymouth 1-0 before going on another extraordinary run for the team. We beat Portsmouth 1-0, MK Dons 1-0, Chesterfield 3-1 with Liam Kelly getting a hat-trick on that day. We beat Tranmere 2-1. We beat Swindon 3-2 in an incredible high-scoring affair with Michael West getting the winning goal before we went to the Johnston's Paint Trophy final at Wembley. Winning 2-0 with a 90th minute winner from Mikel Orbegozo. And not only that, coming over a two-goal deficit and also beating a team who were top of the table in the league. We It was against us for from the ninth minute, pretty much. Also, going into the game, we weren't favourites. But we overcame it magnificently. And for that reason, we've now technically got a cup and a promotion. So that's a... <laughs> A real good accomplishment for the team. And it's also the first trophy we've won. Uh, apart from the leagues that we could possibly win. Since the FA Trophy two years ago. So that's a really good achievement. And also of course this is the last time. Hopefully we'll be able to win this trophy. Or I don't want to get relegated. Uh, so to win it on only our second attempt as well. Is quite an achievement. Uh, we did beat Oxford again 2-1. In the league. Um, beating them yet again. They must be sick of seeing us. And we beat Oldham 2-0 before sadly losing two games on the bounce. We'd lost 2-0 to Bury and we lost 3-2 to Peterborough. They, Peterborough, they got a little bit of revenge on, of course, the, the cup defeat. But I believe at this point we roughly knew where we were going to finish. We needed like a win or like a few more points. So uh, the draw to Bristol City, of course, helped massively. We beat Crawley 3-1 in a great result. 
uh, before losing 2-0 to Notts County and winning the last game of the season against Barnsley with an Albergozo hat-trick, um, ending off a incredible season. So, what a year it has been for us. A cup, a league win, I mean a league promotion, sorry, second place in a pretty incredible season. So, let's run through the players. So, as you can see, this is, again, that's something I always do. Sort of lay out my teams, put them in, you know, players I think are going to be here next season. Players I'm, I think I'm going to be trying to look to utilise. And, um, as you can see, there are a few players not in the team that uh, may surprise people. So, Sim Holmes, currently not in the team. For that reason, I'm not too sure if I want to keep this guy or not. I don't know if he's ever going to become the player it says he is. And not only that, he is wanted by quite big teams. He's wanted by teams I think I could probably get um, a bit of money from. Of course, you know, the Scottish teams can try and get him on free signings and stuff. Um, but if I can hopefully sell this guy before the turn of, the, uh, the turn of June, maybe I could get him out there. But that's just because his contract is expiring as well. But I don't think Sim Holmes has got much of a future here. Even if I do decide to keep this guy on, um, it would be... It would be as a backup player. I just don't think he's ever going to become anything too great. Despite the fact he's got potential just a little bit less than Levitt. I just don't really rate the guy highly. Uh, but as you see from starting 11, there are a few positions that I do really want to strengthen on. The right back being one of them and pretty much the whole defence really. Uh, we already signed, of course, Schweb going into next... Or we're trying to sign Schweb going into next season who will be a centre-back. But ideally, I'd like to improve every position in that back four. Um, right attacking mid, I'm happy with. I'm happy to play Selina. Uh, he didn't have a great year this year, but I'm still happy to put him in because he's got that potential. And up front, Orbegozo, I mean, 26 goals in elite. 26 goals plus 10 assists, so that's 36 goals created in 38 starts. Why wouldn't I put the risk on him and try and play him in a higher division? Of course, uh, we do have Matsuo on the bench who, bench who hasn't played too badly this season. So it's not like we've got terrible players on the bench. Plus, we could play, you know, Diallo up front. We could play Selina up front. We've got a lot of options. So I don't really think the striking position is going to be one I'm going to be worrying about. But let's run through the stats. So Obogozo was a top goal scorer for us. 26 goals. Liam Kelly picked up 18 with 25 assists. Such a shame. I can't sign this player down. I will always keep an eye out for him, though, because he's got some great potential. And... You know, whether I could try and re-sign him on a loan, which I don't think is looking very likely, or if I could try and sign him on a full-time deal, uh, that would be great because he's got some great potential on him, Premier League potential, and that's something I'd really like to have in the team. Uh, Richard Levitt as well scored 14 goals with a few other people chipping him along the way. Liam Kelly got 25 assists, which was the highest in the team. Not only that, Michael West picked up 12 assists. This guy's still putting in half these performances. I mean, his average match rating wasn't great, Michael West, in the league. Um... Considering how many games he played, in fact, it was the worst since I've been here. But still, you know, to get 12 assists, you must be doing something right. So, Michael West pulling a good performance still, as well as Levitt and Obergozo, of course, getting 10 assists. And again, a few people chipping in here and there, Sim Holmes, Selena, things like that. Uh, player of match awards, Liam Kelly picked up the most for the team with 10, as well as the fact, you know, actually, if we, if we saw all the games, uh, how many are there, that's probably roughly... Nearly 30, probably 25, 30 people picking up Man of the Match awards. If we compare that to how many games we played, which is roughly uh, 53 or so, that's a that's a decent return. About 50% of the games we're getting Man of the Matches, which means clearly our players are playing well when we're winning, which is always a good sign. You don't want to fluke games. And average rating, Liam Kelly. Liam Kelly was probably probably our Player of the Year. I won't I won't be surprised if the fans gave him the Player of the Year award. Uh, but, um. I think this is going to be it for now. What we'll do is we'll quickly run through some awards. Uh, we'll go through the key ones. Like Manager of the Year, we didn't pick that up. Martin Allen did. Goal of the Season, we didn't pick up any there. Players, Player of the Year did go to Liam Kelly, and rightfully so. This guy was incredible for us. Like I said, massive shame we can't sign him down. Players, Team of the Year, we ended up getting no, I know, two people in it. Liam Kelly and Mikel Obergozo. Uh, top goal scorer, Obergozo, uh, Asamolonga, sorry, won that. Obergozo just missing out by, I think, a few goals, actually. Uh, he wasn't too far off it, if I am, if my memory serves me correctly. I'm on players, uh, goals. Oh, I guess he was quite far off. Uh, he was ninth with 20 goals. So he was five off getting ranked. So that's not too far off. Uh, no way we were going to catch Brit Asombolonga. 34 goals in 40 games. The guy was on fire. And Young Player of the Month. Oh, no, that was Young Player of the Month. There's no Young Player in this thing, is there? No. So yeah, this is going to be for now, guys. 
Um, next time I'll meet you back will obviously be six months into our first year in the championship. Hopefully everything goes well in this video. Hopefully the audio as well. There will be a few cuts in this. Apologies for that. Um, been a while. <laughs> Let me get back into the swing of things. Uh, but yeah, it's been a really, really good year. I've signed another three-year three -year deal with the club, which is, of course, a massive boost for players because I'm majority of the players' favourite personnel, which includes, I believe, Richard Levitt. There you go, as you can see. So, yeah, this will be for now, guys. Next time I meet you back, six months into the championship. So until then, peace out.